Antoinette Frank was born in Opelousas, New Orleans, and she always wanted to be a police officer. She was a member of the Opelousas Junior Police as well as the New Orleans Police Explorers. Antoinette had a very, very rough childhood. Her brother was a fugitive and her father was a veteran that suffered with PTSD and that popped in and out of her life. There were times that things got so bad that she needed to seek psychiatric help. She has also claimed that her father abused her when she was a child and once Antoinette turned 20, she applied to the New Orleans Police Department or NOPD. But right away, there were problems with her application and she was fired from a previous job at Walmart, but she lied about it on this application. And this was just the beginning of the drama and the pain that Antoinette Frank would cause because she never should have been given a badge because soon it would be covered in blood. During the application process, she failed a psych evaluation, so she had to be retested by a psychiatrist. He evaluated her on 14 characteristics that are relevant to the job of a police officer, and he rated her as unacceptable or below average in most of the categories, as well as a do not hire. In his report, she seemed shallow and superficial, and that he didn't feel that she was suitable for the job. Since she scored so poorly and there was a loophole in the system, she was able to find a psychiatrist that would declare her fit. Also during this time, she was depressed because she was having a hard time finding a job. So she disappeared for a little while and she left her father a note saying goodbye and the contents of that letter caused him to file a missing person report. The note said, I cannot live in this world the way I am, so I will not hold you down with me. I don't know where I will go, but I want to be away from as many people as I can. I was doomed since the day I was born. I see that now. I hate myself and I hate my life. But after all of that, she reappeared the next day. And on February the 7th, 1993, she was hired. And she would later be described as an evil sociopath and a horrible police officer. The reason she was hired, even though she shouldn't have been, was because the NOPD was extremely shorthanded. They were losing officers faster than they could hire new ones. As many as 30 officers were charged with armed robbery, kidnapping, bribery, extortion, rape, and even murder. And several were convicted. In 1994, Officer Lynn Davis organized the murder of Kim Grove less than 24 hours after she filed a brutality complaint against him. He was sentenced to death. Fast forward to six months of Antoinette being on the job and her supervisor was ready for her to return to the police academy for more training. But since there was an officer shortage and such a great need on the streets, she was teamed up with a seasoned officer named Ronnie Williams. Her incident reports were sometimes incomprehensible and fellow officers often complained about her irrational behavior and the police now believe that she may have used her badge to steal from drug dealers. On November the 25th in 1994, Antoinette responded to a call in which this stud here, Rogers Lacoste, had been shot. He was a drug dealer whose mother kicked him out of the house because she didn't allow that type of behavior in her home. And he was taken to the hospital, but even after he was released, Antoinette continued to see him. And soon she was taking him shopping for new clothes giving him money and buying him presents. She encouraged him to get a GED and she warned him that Eastern New Orleans was unsafe. And she also told him that the person that he sold cocaine for worked for the 7th District Police Department, just like she did. Eventually their relationship became intimate and she knew that she was jeopardizing her career, but that didn't stop her from seeing him and he would even go on calls with her where she'd introduce him as either her trainee or her nephew. He was also seen driving her squad car, but soon they would start plotting the robbery of the Kim An, a Vietnamese restaurant. Antoinette and Officer Ronnie Williams took turns moonlighting as off-duty security at the restaurant, so he knew Antoinette well. He also knew about her boyfriend and his criminal history. Ronnie was in charge of scheduling the moonlighting jobs, so Antoinette felt that he was making more money than she was 
and it's believed that this was a motive in the case. And during that time, the Vu family, who owned the restaurant, got really close to Antoinette and Officer Williams. They treated them almost like a member of their family. And they brought Antoinette birthday presents, and they gave her pretty much anything that she needed or wanted. They had even loaned her money, and she also knew that they didn't trust banks and that they kept money in the restaurant. Instead of using banks, they used collective financing, which is when several businesses chip in to help start a new business or to help expand one. And they also hired their own security guards instead of relying on governments to protect them. During the weeks leading up to the crime, Antoinette and Rogers bought six boxes of 9mm bullets at Walmart while she was in her police uniform. She also took a 9mm pistol from the police department's evidence room. Two weeks before the crime, she reported that gun stolen. And when an officer came to take the report about the stolen gun, Lacaz was there with Antoinette. And he would later tell police that that report was bogus. Around 9 p.m. on Friday, March the 3rd, 1995, Antoinette called the restaurant to see if she was needed for the night. And she was told no because Officer Williams would be there. And as I said before, he was in charge of the moonlighting assignments. And he had also started to cut back on the hours that she could work at the restaurant. And this infuriated her. She completed her shift at 11 o'clock at the department. And after changing clothes, she picked up Rogers and then they drove to the restaurant. She went in by herself and she asked for some sodas for herself and a nephew who was in the car. She said that they were going to a midnight movie and so she left with the drinks. And business was slow that night, so the restaurant closed early. But Mrs. Vu went home and her children stayed to clean up. So at this point, there were six people in the restaurant. Antoinette called in for a beefsteak dinner about 15 minutes later, claiming that they missed the movie. Officer Williams told the Vu's to stop letting Antoinette eat there for free and that she was taking advantage of their kindness. He also told one of Mrs. Vu's daughters that she was too naive and that she couldn't trust anyone. And Officer Williams' wife had just given birth about 10 days earlier, so he needed the extra money. And as the restaurant was being cleaned, Chow went into the kitchen to count money and then the dining room to pay Officer Williams. And when she went to pay Officer Williams, she noticed that Antoinette was walking up to the door. So her takeout order was brought out in styrofoam trays, but she and Rogers decided to eat in the restaurant. And Chow had a funny feeling about Lacaz, and one of the reasons was because of his gold teeth. She had always heard that gangsters had gold teeth. Mrs. Vu's son, who was sweeping up around the tables, said that Rogers kept staring at him. So they left the restaurant without finishing their food, but they stood outside talking, and they eventually got in Antoinette's car and drove off. Chow became very uneasy when Antoinette called several times and came to the restaurant twice. So she hid the money in a microwave when she saw that Antoinette had returned for a third time. Chow sensed that something was wrong, so she called out to Officer Williams and her brother not to open the doors. And as she hid the money in a microwave, she heard her brother yelling for her to come to the front. Antoinette had walked up to the glass door and she began shaking it. And during one of those visits, Antoinette had unfortunately stolen Chow's keys to the restaurant. And now she and Rogers were inside. Antoinette pushed Chow backwards towards the kitchen, saying that they needed to talk and Officer Williams was standing behind the bar, and he had started moving in Chow and her brother's direction when the brother heard lots of gunshots coming from the direction of where Officer Williams was standing. So they ran into their large room-sized cooler to hide, and they called to their other siblings to come with them, but they didn't. The freezer had a partial glass facade, and she testified that she saw Antoinette and Rogers running back and forth through the kitchen. And Antoinette stood in the small kitchen of the restaurant with a 9mm pistol in her hand. And now, Chow's brother and sister were kneeling on the floor praying. Her brother played high school football and he wanted to be a priest. And as a child, he followed the pastor around wanting to help. His sister was thinking about becoming a nun. They both worked long hours at their parents' restaurant, but in the blink of an eye, their future was over. And when she was found, she was still on her knees with her forehead resting on the floor. 
He was shot repeatedly in his chest and his back. And when Antoinette heard him trying to talk, she shot him two more times in his head. And between them, they were shot a total of nine times. And Officer Williams was found face down behind the bar in a pool of blood. And he had been shot twice in the head at point blank range and once in the back. But before Antoinette and Rogers left the restaurant, he also took Officer Williams' gun and his wallet. And then they drove off in a car that Antoinette was driving that said, New Orleans police officer on duty. And once things were quiet, Chow and her brother came out of the freezer and that's when they saw Officer Williams' body behind the bar. And she said that once she saw Officer Williams on the floor, her confidence was gone because he was the person that protected them. And when she went to call the police, she couldn't get through. So she called a friend and begged him to call for her. And the friend asked what was wrong, but the battery in her phone died. So her brother ran to a friend's house to call police. But as he was leaving, he let out a horrific wailing sound. He had just found the bodies of his siblings. In his 911 call that was later played in the courtroom, he said that his sister and brother were killed by a female officer named Antoinette and that she came in with a friend and they robbed the store and killed everybody. At 1.52 a.m., the first police unit arrived and Chow had waited in the cooler for help to arrive. But when she saw a police car pull up, she was still afraid because Antoinette was also a police officer. But once she heard more sirens, she felt safe enough to go outside where she ran to the arms of a female detective. After all of this, Antoinette still had the nerve to go back to the restaurant where she kept asking Chow where she and her brother had hidden and what happened to her sister and her brother. And Chow said, you are there, you know everything, why are you asking me that? And at first, when questioned by police, Chow was so scared that she would only speak Vietnamese. But once she calmed down, she was able to tell them what happened. At first, detectives didn't know that Antoinette was one of the shooters. They thought that they had actually gotten lucky and that they had a trained police officer as a witness. When the detectives questioned her, she told them that she had been in the kitchen getting something to drink when she heard gunshots in the dining room. She said she tried to push all the employees out through the back door. And once she started talking about Rogers Lacaz, they knew that she was not a witness. She was a suspect. One of the detectives said that he felt sick once he realized this. The Vu family came to the United States just four years prior, and they were able to reunite with their husband and father that they hadn't seen for 10 years. And they worked very hard to make that restaurant a success. Three weeks after the murders, detectives were contacted by Officer Williams' wife, and she told them that someone had used her husband's gasoline credit card on March the 4th, which was the same day that he was killed. And detectives went to talk with the night manager and they found out that about 45 minutes after Rogers left the restaurant, he used Officer Williams' credit card to buy $15 worth of gas. And signatures weren't required to make a credit card purchase. The manager was able to positively identify Rogers as the person that made the purchase. Antoinette was taken into custody from the restaurant. And after hours of interrogation, she confessed to killing the Vus, but she said that Rogers killed Officer Williams. When asked why she killed the others, she said that Rogers made her do it and that she went along with it because she didn't know what else to do. Rogers admitted to being inside of the restaurant during the shooting, but he said that he didn't shoot anyone. He said that Antoinette committed all three murders and that he just happened to be there. So as usual, the suspects turned on each other. Rogers was later found guilty of three counts of first degree murder, and he was sentenced to death. But after an appeal, he was re-sentenced to life. Antoinette was convicted on three counts of first degree murder and sentenced to death. At Rogers' trial, he called Antoinette a very strange person and said it seemed like she had three personalities. A psychiatrist for the prosecution agreed with the diagnosis that Antoinette was given at the Louisiana Correctional Institute for Women. Her diagnosis was narcissistic personality disorder with antisocial tendencies. A narcissist can make your life a living hell. They may only be concerned about their wants and needs, and they may need to be complimented constantly. 
even though they may appear vain. Inside, they may feel insecure or less than. Some of the traits are, they may have a hard time relating to others and they lack empathy. They may prey on a person's weakness. They can't understand the feelings of others or why a person is emotional about something. They tend to ignore the rights and the feelings of others and they may start fights often. They also don't consider their own safety or the safety of others and they may lack a conscience. They're also very manipulative and some may fake emotions to match the person that they're interacting with. But being a sociopath or having narcissistic personality disorder isn't a choice. People don't choose to be this way, they just are. At 8 p.m. on a Monday night, police received a call about human bones that were found under a house by a dog in the neighborhood. The dog gave the bones to an 11-year-old boy who then told his father his father called the police. The caller lived in Antoinette's former home that she sometimes shared with her father. They found a partial skull, part of a lower jaw, parts of a spine, an arm, and a few ribs, and there was also a partial denture. A neighbor saw her father renovating the house for about two or three months, but then he just vanished. When he asked Antoinette where her father was, she said that he went to work out of town and the skull had at least one bullet wound and experts who examined the bones could only say that they belonged to a man about the same age as Antoinette's father. Police and the coroner's office first tried to get her father's military records, which would have included dental charts that could be compared with the bones. But after a long wait, military authorities reported the records were destroyed in a fire. Antoinette refused to provide a blood sample. Antoinette is still on death row at the Louisiana Correctional Institute for Women, and she's the only woman on Louisiana's death row right now. If her sentence is carried out, she would be the first woman executed in Louisiana since 1942.